Good morning. Welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father J.P. Tickets for St. Augustine School annual calendar raffle are available on the table in the vestibule. For $15 per ticket, you have a chance to win between $50 to $500. Each day during February and March, a ticket will be pulled and the holder of that ticket will win the amount shown on the raffle calendar. The ticket is then placed back into the pot and can be selected again. Please rise and join us for our processional hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves this morning to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be full of good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus 
according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day walk announcing, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil ways, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully, for the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I asked our deacon to incense the gospel this morning because this Sunday, as we know, is Word of God Sunday in the Church Universal. It's an opportunity for us as Catholic Christians to focus on something we may not spend enough time with, and that is the Word. And it's an opportunity for us to reflect upon it. And it's also a call for us to pick up the Bible a little bit more and not just use it as a stand, but to physically use it and to open it Okay. So seeing in that vein, we open our scriptures this morning and we see a declarative statement made by the Lord. So in order for us to understand what that means, I went back into my old notes. Yes, I still have them from eighth grade. Okay. And our eighth grade teacher, if she's watching, would be very happy to hear this. I went back into my eighth grade notes and I found what a declarative statement actually means. And it says that a declarative statement provides facts, can offer an explanation, and can convey information. But in other words, they declare a message. That's why it's a statement and it's declarative. There's no questioning it. It is a statement. And most times that statement is truth. So Jesus in this weekend's gospel gives us two declarative statements. 
as he speaks to the people of the Galilee and as he speaks to his disciples, and in essence, as he speaks to us as well. The first declarative statement he makes is that this is a time of fulfillment, Jesus says. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That's what Deacon just read a few seconds ago, so I'm not making that up. That's in the gospel of Mark. This is literally the 15th verse of Mark's first chapter. Okay? So John is just arrested for proclaiming Jesus as the Son of God and for blasphemy. Eventually we know how he will see his demise. But Jesus picks that message back up and says, now is the time of fulfillment, for the kingdom of God is at hand. This statement should not just be another set of words, because sometimes we hear the word of God and it's in one ear, out the other, I got that, I don't need to process that. That's not what we have today. And if that's what the word of God can be for you, note, fact check, start again, start now. This is the time of fulfillment, Jesus says to us. Even in the midst of everything that's going on in the world today, now is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Now is the time for you to pick up the values that you know that are in you from your baptism and live them again. Live them again. Notice the words I use there. Not live them now. Not remember how you lived them. Live them again. In order to do something again means you've already done it before. Why is it so hard? for us as a society to live the values that we have already known how to live? It's a good question, isn't it? It's a question we can provide the answer with by the way in which we carry ourselves, by the way in which we share with one another that the kingdom of God is not a pie-in-the-sky idea. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is now. The kingdom of God is the way in which I interact with you, the way in which I see the image of God in you, the way in which I reverence the image of God in you. It is then and only then that we can understand the second statement that Jesus makes in this morning's gospel. He calls them to be disciples. Now, we hear that call of the disciples, and we sometimes can say to ourselves, well, that's great. Those men were called from fishing. I'm not a fisherman. Jesus says to them, come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. There's a depth to that statement. It has nothing to do with fishing, and it has nothing to do with men. It has everything to do with expectation and submission. Come after me, Jesus says. Give up everything you think you're supposed to do and follow the one who calls you, my Father. And I will give you the opportunity, I will show you a field, an opportunity that you will be able to do things that your heart could not even begin to imagine. Because when people fish, they don't fish in desolate areas. They don't go to areas where there has been no fish in six months. You go to an area, you have your GPS, you have your radar, and you go to an area where fish are abundant. And that's where you drop your net. That's where you begin to work. Jesus says, come after me. Because the harvest, the fulfillment, the kingdom is here. And the Father has sent me to be the master fisherman in that kingdom. Come after me, and I will show you what the Lord can do with your heart. I will show you what he has already placed within you. And I will show you how good God is if you are willing to be submissive to it. Sounds fantastic. 
How does that work for us now? Well, where are you? Are you not in a place where the Lord can make both of those things become a reality? Look around you. Go ahead. You can look to your left and your right. The mass doesn't stop your eyes. Go ahead. You are in a place where the Lord has called you. The Lord has called your heart to him this morning. In this place. In this ocean of mercy. The master fisherman has called you. And he says, come. Come and be repentant. Hear the word. Let the truth clear any sin from your heart and your mind. And come forward and receive the strength and the grace by which we are called to live the call of the disciples every day of our lives. Every time we come to the celebration of the Eucharist, my dear sisters and brothers, it is a foretaste of the kingdom of God. It is a foretaste of the kingdom of God. That's why Mass is anything but boring. Anything but just another check in the box. If heaven is a check in the box, I think you need to reevaluate your understanding of heaven. This is heaven. This is where we are called to be. Which is why it boggles my mind sometimes that people blatantly turn away from being here. Keep saying you want heaven, yet you turn it away. I'm speaking to the people in here. I'm speaking to the people in the camera this morning. Come home. Come to the ocean. Because he's calling you. As he's called everyone here. As he's called all of us. Every day, every week of our lives. Come follow me, says the Lord. And I will not just make you a fisher of men. I will not just show you what my, I can do through you. I will make you my declarative statement. Praise be Jesus Christ. Let us stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We wait for the Lord with courage, firm in our belief that we will see the Lord's bounty, and full of trust in him, we offer our prayers and petitions. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will be ever more fervent 
in proclaiming the kingdom of God and the truth of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the world who have the task of governing many will carry out their duties with justice and maintain peace among all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations may repent of the sins of abortion, euthanasia, and neglect of the poor and the weak, and may reform their laws to protect every human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and the consecrated life, and for a deeper gratitude for all priests and religious now serving in the diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience anguish or sorrow in their lives, that the Lord will relieve their burdens and give them joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may enjoy the peace of God's kingdom, and that those who grieve for them may be comforted, especially Doris Brown Meyer, Mary Cronin, and Russell Gargliardi, especially for our parishioners and benefactors and for Joanne Sarusi, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for all the intentions in our book of petitions and all those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, through the gift of your Son, a light has arisen in our lives. May we be true to that light and may be true to the word Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. Praise the Lord and his name for our good and of all this holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis de Sales, St. Augustine, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have entered my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Amen. 
We invite those who are live streaming in their vehicles or outside at this time to come to the entrance of the church so that Father McSweeney may bring you Holy Communion. Please join us in our com communal hymn, Lord, You Have Come. a few moments of your time. Today's gospel tells us the story of the calling of the first apostles. Simon, Peter, and Andrew, James, and John left their nets, their boats, and even their father Zebedee to follow our Lord. Fishing was their livelihood. It was everything they had, but Jesus was well worth it. What is a sacrifice? It, indeed, it was. But there was something in Jesus' invitation that they couldn't resist. His eyes beckoned. They felt it in their hearts and they realized that they wanted to be with him forever. Today, Jesus calls us too in our work, in our dealings with others, in our self-sacrifice for strangers and the people we love. We have felt this strong, and our courage has been put to the test through the events of this past year, from the effects of natural disasters, civil unrest, and global pandemic. I know that for many of you, the hardship continues. I know that many people are still suffering 
but through it all we remain united as a family, we remain united in Christ, we recognize in the vulnerable and the needy the image of the suffering Christ who is reaching out to us. As Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. It is in this light of self-sacrifice and love of neighbor that I appear to you once again for your generosity in contributing to the annual Cardinal's stewardship appeal. Some of you may have received a letter from Cardinal Dolan explaining the appeal, but allow me to briefly explain the goals of the fund. Where will the money go? To support financially stricken parishes, many of which are struggling to service the faithful, to support feeding programs and other essential human services, to support our Catholic schools in various faith formation activities, to contribute to the education of our new parish priests, to care for our retired priests who continue to pray and make sacrifices for us. And as we learn from 2020, to set aside funds to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. The goal for the Archdiocese is $21 million, so each family will be given the opportunity to make a one-time gift or to commit to a monthly pledge. You may make your donations online through www.cardinalsappeal.org. I understand that your situations may have changed, and I invite you to prayerfully consider a contribution in participate in this year's appeal. For those who will participate for the first time and for those who have been participating on our online masses, thank you very much for your efforts and commitment to remain connected with our parish. Your participation is vital to the success of the Cardinal's appeal. Once again, you can make donations online through www.cardinalsappeal.org. Thank you in advance for your generous support. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God, most blessed mother. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. <coughs> Please join us in our recessional hymn, The Church's One Foundation.